Hello everyone and welcome to No Crime No Time Community. I'm gonna shut my phone down real quick and we're gonna get started. A little airplane mode there. There we go. All right, so I'm excited. We're going to continue our series on Denny Suspects. Um, to start this off, I just wanna say that we'll go through all of the points of um, conflict and then we'll come back and on the second half, we'll join and uh, see what you guys have to say. So in starting that, let's go ahead and get rolling. This is Earl Avery. Now, for those of you that have been binging, making a murder, and you're just kind of starting to understand the, the um, connections and so forth, Earl Avery is the larger of the two brothers in size of Stephen Avery. And he, his role was very downplayed in this series. But if you do your own research, which I highly recommend in any situation, especially wrongful conviction, don't take other people's words for it. See it for yourself. Um, but after the Making a Murderer documentary, his role become more, became a lot more relevant as things became more well-known. So I just want to throw a hi out there to Kelly and Teresa and Justin and to Anthony for joining me. And it looks like we have about 20 right now and I'm hoping that'll grow. So let's go ahead and get started. So the reason that Earl would be a suspect would first off be, well, let's shrink some stuff down here so we can uh, see everything nice and clear. I don't know about like that. I'll throw that over here. Let's shrink this down a little bit. And we will move that right up there. Okay. So, number one would be they would have to have a motive, correct? Well, Earl Avery was, and okay, so there's three brothers and a sister. There's Stephen, there's Earl, there's Chuck, and there's Barbara. And the family business was up for grabs at that time, for lack of better words. Um, the family had made the decision that Ma and Pa Avery are letting go of the salvage yard. And now Stephen just gets out of prison after being wrongfully convicted for 18 years he served. And he's got an award of millions coming. And guess who is expected to purchase the salvage yard? Stephen, because he's going to have the money. But now who's been working that salvage yard for the last 18 years that Stephen hasn't been there? His two brothers, Earl and Chucky. Okay? So it provides a motive because of the fact that if Stephen doesn't get his money, he cannot buy the salvage yard. Right? Another one would be is um, if Stephen went to prison, maybe there was a line of thinking that said, well, he can't spend his millions it'll come back to the salvage yard. So there you go on the first one. Now the second one is he claimed publicly, he claimed publicly that when he was 15 years old and Stephen was in prison for wrongfully being convicted of a rape he did not do, sexual assault, um, he claims allegedly Stephen ordered him to have sex with his wife, Lori, and then phone him back and tell him what it was like. So I think that's very strange um, to hear of this. Now, Lori never denies that her and Earl had a relationship that I know of. So I'm not sure. I do know as um, brother and sister-in-law that they did have a relationship. I don't know if it was sexual in nature or not. So that is what he claimed. So number three, this is not a claim. There was actual charges. He beat and choked his wife in an argument, and he that proves he's violent towards women. Um, from my understanding, I believe it was with a phone cord. I'm not quite sure. There may have been some illegal entry into the place, allegedly. Um it was where they were estranged from each other, whether it was a separation legally, I'm not sure. Um, but the, the charges did come up. He also 
got found guilty of hiding a camera in the bathroom during a party where children and women were changing clothing and going to the bathroom. Now, what I found interesting was um, in this in this actual charge and his statement for justification was that he was able to control himself this time. I, I've always remembered that he said, you know, he was able to control himself this time as if other times he would not necessarily be able to control himself. Maybe I don't know. I just find that strange wording, but we get a lot of strange wording from Earl, a lot of strange wording, which some of that's going to come into play. So let's go ahead and jump down to five. Accused Stephen of sexual assault of his adopted daughter, Marie Avery. Now, when we had the prison guy that was in prison with Stephen awaiting trial, Wigert and Fassbender went to him and told him to shut his mouth and not speak of Stephen Avery again. And what does that have to do with this is, that guy stated that while Stephen and him had shared a cell, he had said something along, now I'm paraphrasing, so you'd have to read the case out, but it's in there. He had stated that he asked Stephen something along the lines of, hey, didn't you molest your niece or something like that? And Stephen alleged, allegedly said to him, well, no, actually, I've got letters to prove from my niece that her stepfather, my brother, was the one she was saying sexually assaulted her. Now, what I find interesting is this court case came into being. Marie Avery was indeed Miss Blank during the case so investigation into if Stephen had molested this child or sexually assaulted this minor child. And the case was dropped. But who incited that? Who started that whole thing and how did that go about? Through Candy, Marie Avery's mother. Now keep in mind, this is Earl's next wife. So Candy and him have also a relationship with Colborn. And Candy Avery, his wife, is the one that has accused Stephen with Earl of sexually assaulting Marie Avery. Now, when the police come to her and explain that they're going to need proof and that they're going to have to question other family members, such as Ma and Pa Avery, this is when Candy wants it dropped immediately and cannot produce photographs that she claims existed. So I found that very interesting that when Bluff is called to Bluff that she has to prove it, she, she drops it immediately. But Candy is not a lover of Stephen. Number seven, his wife, Candy Avery, was going in on the news publicly when Stephen was awaiting trial and spreading a lot of negative publicity about her opinions of Stephen Avery. And none of them were kind, to say the least. Um, she just absolutely cannot stand him. And she has admitted herself that she has a relationship with Colborn. So not only does Colborn, do, Andrew Colborn, who is the officer that is in question for possibly framing Stephen, um, one of them, he's this guy that's coming over as a deputy. He's the first one to interview Stephen as a deputy. Um, he was the one that missed the call for the, or took the call, I'm sorry, took the call for Brown County in 1991 that would have saved Stephen something like nine years in prison had somebody said, hey, Gregory Allen just said he committed the, the sexual assault that somebody else is serving time for. They would have been able to connect the dot, investigate Stephen, been out. So Candy's, Candy's tied to this in several ways because she's related to Stephen as a sister-in-law her, her daughter is the one that she's claiming Stephen has sexually assaulted, but then drops the charges. She's married to Earl, and she has a relationship with Colborn. So his wife plays a huge role. 
Now so does his daughter, Kayla. Kayla fully admitted on the stand in Brendan's trial that she completely lied about Brendan. But why? Who was prompting and putting things in these kids' heads? Her parents are Candy and Earl Avery. It's almost like Earl, you know, I'm, I'm going to say in my personal view, it makes me question, is Earl using his children and is Candy using her children to maneuver this in a manipulative way, to coerce the circumstance in their favor? And what is their favor? Right? Remember the motive. Don't forget the motive. Now we have a long way to go. I'm going to go ahead and show that real quick. Justin had posted something that I want to make sure we hit. So we have a long way to go. So let's keep going here. So now he accused Stephen of getting him in trouble over photographs on the phone while Stephen is awaiting trial. So on the phone calls that Millbilly and a lot of the others, Kaboom and all of these wonderful individuals have worked so hard on, hats off to you guys, these phone calls have a call where Earl, it wasn't Chuck, I had misquoted in a previous video, so correcting it here, it was Earl, he says that Stephen got him in trouble over photos. What photos do we have? Did Stephen have? Because he admitted he had them. But Stephen said, no, 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 I got rid of those. So what photos did Stephen have that would have gotten Earl in trouble? And I have to ask, to be all fair, could Stephen have been using those photos to hold over Earl's head? I don't know. I'm just asking because of the way it was said. So let's continue and see, um, whoops, didn't mean to take that away from you. How about the fact that as soon as Stephen is arrested on 11-9, he volunteers, volunteers that he's talked to his wife, Candy Avery. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to take a drink. <coughs> Forgive me. He volunteers to the law enforcement that he felt after talking to his wife, Candy, that he felt Stephen was indeed guilty. Yeah, he volunteered it and they, they wanted to know why, right? It just, he's throwing Stephen under the bus from over and over and over again. It's almost like he thinks he should have the Avery crown of that lineage and he's trying to get Stephen out of there. It really makes me want to relook at the situation back with Gregory Allen and see if there's some connection if he was being set up back then by Earl. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but this is just, Earl would have been about 12, I know, but still something's just wrong here in so many ways. He even states on number 11, he says, quote unquote, and pay attention to the verbiage because it's so strange. He says, even if my brother did something, I would tell. What does that mean? Even if my brother did something, I would tell. I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to interpret. He has access to Stephen's blood. Remember, Chucky went to Menards with Stephen. And he had cut his finger. And Charles would have been able to walk right past that dog, Bear. He would have known how to get in that place. He had access to Stephen's blood. All right, you guys, let's go with number 13. The main, main Denny aspect here besides motive, another one, is opportunity. And guess what? Now, walk with me here. He had knowledge the victim was to arrive. I've been challenged on this many times. I've also shown where after Stephen was interviewed by the news immediately on the 4th and the 5th of November by Channel 2 News and other news, 
that the reporter even explains. Stephen had forgotten that his brothers and family had decided to sell the front loader in loader, same machine, whichever way you drive it, okay? They were wanting to sell it. The brothers were suggesting this. Earl and Chuck Avery wanted to sell the end loader. They had given Stephen the message that when Teresa Halbach, they didn't name her, but they said, when the auto trader girl comes, send her down to the quarry because we want her to take pictures of the end loader. And he forgets, Stephen forgets. And he dials that phone up again. And the reason I know this is because early on in those interviews, they ask him why her phone is showing that call. And he states, yeah, well, I called her back, but uh, I knew she wasn't going to do it. So I just hung up, right? He's like, I, I realized it was just too late in the day. It was 4.45. You also have in the case of where they're asking him, Robert, Robert Fabian walks up. He asked Chucky and Earl, did the girl come? This isn't Stephen saying, no, she forgot. It's Stephen admitting that he did not send her down to the quarry to the end loader. And so, yeah, they knew she was coming because they had a conversation about it. And they took that right off the market. That end loader never got sold. Who was driving the end loader? Read the queso. We've got Stephen, Chucky, and Robert Fabian having a conversation down at the office at the Avery Salvage Yard. Where's Chucky? Oh, he's down on the quarry on the end loader. Guess what time and day this is? October 31st, somewhere in that time frame where it's still daylight and you can run an end loader. Think on that because what's really interesting is in the quarry is where they found the pelvic bone. Do you see where it's coming, where I'm coming from? He has no alibi, which that'll be number 24. So you got that ahead of time. To his own, his own admission, he was actually using the same type of weapon that the state claims was the murder weapon, a 22. And what was he doing? Hunting rabbits. What kind of rabbits? And where? He says that Avery Salvage Yard, right? He says that Avery Salvage Yard hunting rabbits, rabbit, rabbits. Think how close that is to Deer Camp, you guys. Think how close that is to Cuss Road. And he's on a golf cart. What did the cadavers hit on? The cadaver dogs hit on the golf cart and a shovel and a bucket. He claims he drove by on 11-4, November 4th, day before Pam Sturm supposedly, allegedly finds the RAV. <clears throat> and the RAV wasn't there. Now, either it wasn't there, and that proves somebody else planted it, or it was there, and he's trying to give you a red herring and say it wasn't. And it could have been stored somewhere else and put there by him on 11.5. Who knows? So we don't, we don't get much off that. Other than it just seems like a strange thing to happen. And we really need to remember that statement. So on 18, he uprooted trees claiming to want to replant them. So he, he actually had a bundle of trees, smaller trees, with their roots attached, claiming he was going to replant them. And then later when the RAV4 is allegedly, Teresa's uh, RAV4, allegedly, because who knows is, who knows at this point, what RAV4 was found, but a RAV4 is found on, on, on Avery's. And lo and behold, it's covered so that it's the only thing, all, only vehicle covered, right? It's a beacon that has the bright, bright, huge white words that say RAV as the only thing showing on the vehicle because it's, it's ass end is sticking out with the word RAV, right? And it's covered with rooted trees. Interesting. I mean, really? Number 19. <coughs> <clears throat> he, 
He stayed behind when the family went to Cribbits. Now, this is a weak one for me because it was his weekend to stay behind. And if everybody else is going up north, he doesn't have a choice but to stay behind. Worse yet would be is if he didn't stay behind, if he was actually on the up and up, because that leaves the property unprotected. Now, on the other side of the coin, this is a problem because he he doesn't protect the property at all from being messed with. Obviously, because he gave permission to Pam Sturm, God of Pam, to search the salvage yard. And let me tell you, she searches that 3,900 cars, 39 acres, in 15 minutes and finds a car she's looking for. How'd she do that? Did somebody point her in the right direction? Because I know according to the case, so I've said this many times before, when they were directing the deputies to find the RAV and they had to go alone for the first time and they don't know where to find the RAV, they're told to stay in the left tire lane and it'll take you right to the RAV. Was that what Earl told her? Or did somebody give her heads up and say that? How did she find that that quick? But yeah, Earl gave permission for that. One of the most suspicious things, though, I don't care who you are, is that he hid in the bedroom upstairs under dirty laundry when law enforcement came to get his DNA collection. Yep, buried his big old body under a large pile of clothing, dirty clothing, to avoid being picked up for just DNA collection. All right, that's just, that's just wrong, right? Okay, this is a small one, but it bothers me, and it's one I've, I've kind of hung on to a while. There's a pair of broken glasses that are laying at the end of Dassey's driveway, kind of near where, not like close, close, but relatively close enough to the Dassey van that's being sold that Teresa photographed, okay? Or allegedly Teresa photographed. We don't know who photographed it anymore. Anyway, the more I learn about this case, the less I know. So then the broken glasses in the, in the driveway over at Dassey's happened to coincide with another coinkydink, right? Uh, a Manitowoc coinkydink. They coincide with Earl Avery's glasses getting broken and he had already canceled his glasses appointment that he was supposed to do that afternoon. And then very late at the last minute, he calls up the assistant and she agrees to stay late because he's got to go get glasses because he broke his. That bothers me. That big time bothers me. So we're nearing the end here, guys. He knew the salvage yard, number 23. Earl Avery knew the salvage yard better than anyone else. He knew every car there. He knew everything about it. He knew about Cuss Road. He knew about Deer Camp. He knew the demographics of the area, the logistics of things and how they laid, how to plan something in the sense of where something would be, should be, how it could work. He had knowledge. So he has the opportunity because he knows the victim's coming. He has access to her and he has motive. Bam! He is a suspect. He has no alibi and he was never a suspect. Arg! Ah, that makes five. Five 24 point conflict making the murderers. Denny suspects. All right, guys, I want to thank you for joining me on that. And for the rest of you that want to go join the share time, I welcome you to do so. We're at about 55 viewing. We've got 10 likes. Appreciate that. Um, do know that if YouTube decides to uh, discontinue this programming because I'm demonetizing the channel, um, we have Vimo, and I'll be sharing that link with you too. We're slowly going to switch over to Vimo, which is something that our supporters pay for. And I want to thank you supporters for keeping us advertiser free as well as complying with the child COPA law. A very special thank you to those that donate and help us to remain 
uncensored because it's wonderful at this time to have complete freedom of speech. So let's hit over here. We're going to kind of float around a little bit. Things might be out of order, but I'll do my best. So I just want to welcome everybody. Um, we've got Gold's Gym with us. Let's see. We've got Super Mario Maker. Hi, guys. Shane Carlos. Ah, Myra's here, and I said your name right. <laughs> we got Graham Moss. Good to see you. Bing, Bing Green, Teresa, Kelly. Good to see you guys. If I miss somebody, it's not intentional at all, I promise. Hi, Dark. I don't know. Did I say Gold's Gem? I've never seen your name, so you're welcome to come here. Um, if you disagree with something said, I appreciate anything you want to offer. We're all just trying to learn. And uh, she states that she is a personal friend with Kayla. She did not lie just to lie about Brendan. She was pressured even harder than Brendan by Uyghur and threatened. She flipped on the stand because she knew the interrogators wouldn't do the right thing and be honest with how they operate. So she couldn't lie anymore. They basically forced her to make up those stories. Thank you, Gold's Gem. That puts a huge, I believe you. I really do. And I feel Kayla was, was twisted very hard and she was a very young girl. And I'm sure that was a very, very scary place to be as a child. Um, the lie itself that was connected bothers me. Who all put pressure on this girl needs to be looked at sternly. Uyghur, Fassbender, and who else? Who else was pressuring her to keep the... the um, suspicions off themselves and so in all due respect i thank you for sharing that um <clears throat> i'm sorry i've got a dry throat today because of allergies i'm not sick though um justin says yeah that is bs gold both of them need to be locked up yeah he's talking about Uyghur and fastbender both of them need to be locked up they they need to be very much investigated um I'm backing up a little bit. Kelly Perry says, all these missing photos. Investigation continues. Oh, I love it. It's so true. Everything's always about photos, isn't it? Um, Let's see here. I'm going to back up and see if there's more to Justin's statement. Yeah, Justin says a statement to use against Stephen to make him look like a sexual deviant. Oh, God, yeah. Do you remember that part, the dramatic part where Sheriff Pogel puts in the paperwork so that they could basically have Stephen muzzled and, and like a, a neck harness type thing so that, you know, he wouldn't attack the people in the jury. And, and oh, my Lord, all to make Stephen look like a monster, like Silence of the Lamb. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't treated as harshly as they treated this innocent man, Stephen. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Let's see here. What else do we have? Um, I'm very happy to see you all today. Uh, I really enjoy this series to make us really think um, along the lines of why this case would need to be reexamined. I've proven here five times in 24 ways how these individuals need to be re-looked at as Denny suspects and how not allowing Denny suspects in the first trial railroaded Stephen with evidence that was already targeting and tunnel vision. So if, you know, you only, if you go out and you, you buy a hundred bags of M&Ms and you sprinkle them all over Stephen's trailer, okay, but you only go in and you only collect the green M&Ms, right? Then you go to trial. You can't produce anything other than green M&Ms. There's no other proof than the fact that there was green M&Ms there. So it, it targets the green M&Ms. Um, I know that's a stupid analogy, but I'm just saying, if all they do is collect the evidence is associated in their view with Stephen and they can make up whatever they want to attach this item to him or even falsify or tamper with this item to make it appear or plant this item to make it appear as the victim, um, as the suspects. When you get to trial, what is the defense left to do? Right? 
because there's where's the uh, they have to do their own investigation and it didn't get done properly so it's it's also the the investigation did not get done and that's where we have this lack of counsel proper counseling it's insufficient and it's it's poor counseling with all due respect too much trusting and blind blindly falling into the traps was going on we can't really judge in a sense because there's so much propaganda at the time what would you believe at the time Justin says to keep the eyes on Stephen the more shit in the media the better it is to keep you out of the eye of the investigation yeah we've got to keep Stephen in the media it keeps him safe I agree Shane Carla says deputy dirty dog Colburn Gold Jim says, oh, I read that. Okay. I just want to make sure I get everybody's uh, opinion. I'm still looking up, seeing they were still talking about the same thing. So we're going to jump ahead. Let's see here. It's, I lost somehow the context. Yes, holds Jim, them two need to be locked up for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's who they're talking about. They call, Justin calls him Liger and fact bender. <laughs> uh. Yeah, a lot of us um, despise Colburn Link and Kratz. And Kratz has been playing chicken lately and not coming out. I can't believe that he's not starving for attention by this point. I mean, you do know that as a narcissist, he's addicted to the attention. And so he will make his way out of his wormhole somehow, his little rat hole. And he will, he will surface. But the fact that he's awful quiet right now is quite, qu quite concerning from, from the point of what are they doing? Or is it that we finally just shut him up? I don't know. I really don't know. So Gold Jim says Earl still goes to visit Stephen. I think they are cool now. Um, I get that. I'm not saying Earl did do this. I'm saying that if I can provide a Denny suspect, then that means that we need to go back to trial. And so if Earl is completely innocent, um, he would work with Zellner and get his name cleared and get knocked off the list. That'd be wonderful. But the thing is, is right now, we have to prove that that the first trial, there should have been more than just Stephen looked at. There's a lot of unanswered questions here, such as the no alibi. You know, were you really, was Earl really on the end loader in the quarry as suggested by the witnesses that were recorded in the castle at the time that she's gone missing? Because we also at that time have a victim that cell phone completely is not reachable and that's what you have in the quarry is you have immediately you have very very crappy reception if any so it connects some dots and they need to be resolved um, am I accusing someone no I am showing how legally this case was not a fair trial so um, yeah gold gem you have a great point Someone higher than state government in Wisconsin needs to step in here. Way too much evidence that needs addressed and at minimum new trials. Totally in agreement with you, Goldstim. Jennifer Manning says, I know this is a stupid question, but are we to believe queso is the Bible or court transcript? I can't keep up. No, I don't believe a damn thing in the, the queso. I use it to prove that they're full of crap. I used to prove that um, the effects don't add up, that their timelines are off, that they, they recorded that information well after the fact. I don't believe that we get a lot of true information when we do FOIAs either. We're given the information that they can build another story on. Um, the truth is buried right now, but in giving in leaving out the truth, I've said this from the very beginning, in leaving out the truth, it doesn't obscure the truth very long because we will figure out what's missing, which is the truth. 
You know, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together and finding that one piece is missing, but you still know what that piece looks like. You still know what you're missing. And that wisens us up to a lot more of not just this wrongful conviction, but the more there's lacking evidence in this case that supports that Stephen's innocent, it proves that that's how they run their game. And this gamut is going to quit because we're wise to it. And people aren't going to allow this going forward. We'll stand up. So, um, Gold's Gym says Earl hides and when confronted agrees to help Ellie because the whole Avery family is terrified and jaded towards law enforcement because they screwed their whole family so many times. And that is a very good possibility here. That's why I mean, if they're put to the under the screw so hard that they've been forced to be seen as a suspect, okay? If law enforcement just did what I did and said, hey, you either help us or you're an accomplice. What what may have happened is they may have collapsed under the immense amount of pressure and performed um, the acting role that law enforcement was demanding. Now, keep in mind, back then and now, if marijuana is considered illegal in that location, it can be prison. And so if you just happen to simply have um, a self-medicating family over there and the law enforcement's been watching them and finds out that they've got THC on site, um, that family is at the mercy at that law enforcement or they will be destroyed. So what you've got is you've got them breaking the law because the law says they can't have marijuana, which I'm talking about this because of Barb's THC charge puts her at... Um, a game of mercy. And it's kind of like a kid trying to wrestle an adult is what it was with Brendan. And he, he collapsed too. Um, it's heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching. So Shane says, whoops, I just lost where you were, Shane. Let me roll back up. There's a lot going on here, so I'm trying to get to it. Ooh, I'm way far back. I may have missed what you said, Shane. Okay. Shane Carlos says, A guy, Dan King, in 1994, burnt his girlfriend for two days in a burn barrel, and he had to stoke with accelerant. So did Earl stay up for two days also? I don't know. I don't know. There's all kinds of things, like that one call where it was a co-worker of the mother of Chuck's wife. So a co-workers. So the mother-in-law of Chuck was at work and a co-worker overheard her say, hearsay basically. Um, and he called in to the authorities and reported that it had been stated something along the lines of um, they burnt that B-I-T-C-H and they said the word. That they had done it. It's it. There's no way to know if that was ever even said. It's hearsay all the way through. It's from a report that isn't even a statement. The, the, what we have to get to is where these people produce alibis that are locked in. That people can say, I was right here doing this. I had witnesses and so forth. And if you don't have an alibi, you need to be looked at. That's the truth. It's a true murder investigation. So it's not that that person did it. It's that we're looking at them as suspects in the same sense that you would if anybody was murdered and the person had motive, opportunity, and had a connection to the victim, had knowledge they were coming. So it's certainly nothing against Earl Avery. It's nothing against Scott Tadich or Bobby Dassey, or Ryan Hilligas, or Andrew Colborn. I am simply going through and breaking down what we know qualifies them as Denny suspects. Um, uh, Myra says, I believe some might have been terrified. And then they, she goes on to say, some might have been secrets on their of their own. Ellie can be relentless. Terry, welcome, welcome to our channel here. 
and this is Terry McCarley, I believe. Beyond sad, poor Stephen and Brendan will die in prison due to corruption by the system. Heartbreaking, to put it lightly. Yeah, Justin says stun belt. They wanted to put him in a stun belt. True. Pogel, Sheriff Pogel, was trying to get a court order to put Stephen in a stun belt to protect others. Can you imagine? That's just animalistic. It's just evil. It's wicked. And I think I missed something with Corey. Corey Zipper, hi. Welcome to the channel again. Uh, he says, my ex-wife and I have proof about who killed Teresa. We were also entrapped by the police and can prove it. Corey Zipper, 164 Main Street, Potter, Wisconsin. Oh, welcome, welcome. Please share, Corey. I'm going to buzz down here to see where we can see where Corey. Okay, Corey says, Hi Kelly, yes, we started being entrapped in 1991. Over 500, 500 police reports and 25 years later, here we are. Victims of pornography ring operated by police with full local news support. Corey, it's interesting that 1991 was the year that Colburn received the Brown County call about it might not be Stephen Avery, that it was uh, Gregory Allen. You should contact me. I'm going to put um, this out there. Oh, I forgot part of it. I'm typing my email for you. If you want to come on here and share with us verbally, or if, and we can hide your identity, um, or if you just want to do a pre recorded session, or if you just want to give me something in an email, I would be happy to share whatever you want. Go ahead and list um, list your website and I can share it. Okay? So, Dark Side of the Moon says, Rubber Ducky, check out Corey Zipper. Got it. Did. Yeah, please contact me if we can get... If we can get on board to show that this was massive coercion, Zellner will be able to use that very much. All we need are affidavits. Affidavit after affidavits, and we get Zellner to, to use them to show that the witnesses were actually coerced and pressured. Stephen says, just imagine if you were about to lose everything, how far would you go? The sheriff is sitting pretty now. Yeah, isn't that true? Kelly is asking Corey, are you related to George Zipper, who I've proven George Zipper is 100% innocent. He had an alibi airtight. That's all I ask is to really get these alibis out there. Yes, Justin. So, so Carrie Perry, Perry is agreeing that Corey definitely needs to get it out there. Myra is saying Corey might not be able to speak public about everything. Ellie has a lot of eyes. Kelly Perry says maybe Corey should contact KZ. Um, I agree. You can do that too. Teresa says nobody from Wisconsin here can and won't investigate. But could we even get the FBI? I don't know. Well, the FBI has already been in this case and the in the Hallwalk uh, Avery case, they tested the blood, they tested the bone, they tested the car, um, and they did nothing about it that I know of. Corey says, whoa, 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 I lost Corey. I'm going to go back up. We don't want to get out of this. I don't want to move too quickly. Okay, Corey says, we've been trying desperately to get the word out. We are silenced at every turn. We believe this is done to us by the Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Yes, we 500 reports detailing entrapment. Corey, um, if you can email me, I can give you a place that we can make these documents safe and we can try and get the word out there. Um, you know, we do get a lot of people viewing our information and we also have... Um, another website that we pay for that is uncensored. And so therefore with us not having um, advertisement and um, monetization because our supporters take care of our needs and allow us to remain uncensored, 
we may be your best bet right now to keeping it out there once it's released. Um, another way would be highly recommended to contact Selner if at all possible. If that doesn't work, please feel free to contact me at the address I showed. I agree with Kelly. You need to get your story out there. I'm totally supportive. All of us are. You get that to rubberducky2005 at yahoo.com. And I will share, 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 I assure you. Um, James Crane says, The problem and solution lies in the investigation. And since much of it is not known, we need people to step forward and give us that. Yeah, I've, I've been hoping that locals will realize that Fear is, is created within our whole being. The danger actually is us not sharing puts us as individuals. Um, once we share the knowledge is out there, they they really, they have to quiet a lot more of us. It, it makes a huge target of, of thousands of people that is, is very large. If you're one person and they know you have the info, you're a very small target um, and, and you're easily you're a sitting duck. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I do what I do. Um, I try to keep Steven safe by keeping him in the news, try to keep anybody that wants to come forward, having a voice, whether they're just on their telephone, walking down the street, getting their mail, thinking they're nobody special, but they've been through hell and they've got some information they feel they could get somewhere with. I keep this open to you guys, the real you people. And you know that. So it's an open floor, open floor. Um, I will tell you, um, beyond Avery road has contacted me and would like to get on here and have a voice. And though I haven't always agreed with everything that Chad Keller talks about, I do feel everybody should have a voice and, uh, I go into it objectional and I will try to maintain my respectful position. I've never had any issue with Chad. He's always shown me respect. Um, I know he doesn't have um, a lot of respect from a lot of people because of the brassness of his, his nature. Um, some people think that he makes up facts. I still want to hear his opinion. Okay. But that's all it is. It's an opinion. So we'll, we'll be getting that out there if he's interested. He contacted me. He'd like to come on. I said, we can certainly do so. So we'll work on that. Might be interested to hell. Anybody that wants to come on, just let me know. This isn't some, you know, this isn't some uh, popularity contest. This is just to get the truth out there. So Corey says, we have went to all local channels and nobody will report the truth. Bring it on, Corey. I'll help you. Who is Casey? They're talking about Kathleen Zellner. And um, you can get her information. It's Kathleen Zellner at... Um, is it somebody lists the address for Kathleen? I can't remember it offhand. So Teresa says, Kathleen Zellner, look her up. She's the best if you're wrongfully convicted. And she also represents Stephen Avery right now in post-conviction. Um, so Corey goes on to say, we will try to get this to her anyway. Try to get this out any way we can. We have been handling, handing out flyers, no avail. Kevin Rampa told me personally he will not tell on the cops. Kevin Rampa. Eddie Gal says, nobody burnt a body in a burn pit or barrel there. That's true. Eddie, you're right. There's no way. Yes. Yes, Corey. Kathleen. Gold Jim says, Corey, tell us and we will start a movement online with petitions, videos, and more. Thank you, Gold Jim. Very much so. You guys, we the people hold the power. And as Gold Jim says, we are powerful together. We really are. Um, not just this channel, but truthers. We are a family, whether we agree with each other or not in small facts, we all have the same goal. Get our guys home, get the truth out there, protect the locals. So if we can help you contact us in any way you can, we're, we're behind you 100%. So Corey Zipper says, Scott Tadich stops us from seeing Barb Avery. We have been there five times. Really? See, and that's the thing. If, if, if Barb 
made the comment. Okay, so Brad Dassey made the comment one time or even showed it. It was a text that Barb wanted to talk to him and he was at work and he said, it's going to have to wait a couple hours um, and, and so forth and then I can talk to you. And she was like, but I won't be alone then. That's a cry for help. If any there was, okay? So it, it's scary to think that somebody could actually have been maintaining hostages, if you will, all these years. It, it's scary. Um, Gold Gem says, is Scott involved? Dark Side of the Moon says, Teresa T. Corey Zipper says, thank you everyone for your support. And Myra says, and again, if it comes back to ST, meaning Scott Tadish, no surprise. Kelly Perry says, thank you for speaking up. And Corey Zipper says, and I it went so fast. Hold on, hold on, I'm coming. Back up there. Okay. So to answer the question from Gold Jim, is Scott involved? It says... Goal, Corey Zipper says, absolutely, Scott is involved. Dark Side of the Moon has thumbs up for Corey. Um, Teresa says, how Barb can live with him, I'll never know. Um, Gold Jim says, Scott killed or aided in the cover-up. Corey Zipper says, thank you, RG. I will email you soon. Excellent. See, I'm, I'm going to be sharing something on my spiritual side here in a few minutes. I saved that for the end for those of you that don't want to hear my opinion on spirit. Um, but I, I, I was shared some grace this week and I, I really want to share that because it's it's quite moving. And I believe there we do our things for a reason. And I felt very compelled to get this out there today to get a live out there for you guys. I wasn't quite finished with um, Earl Avery and. I happened to wake up really early for my first day off in a while. And I thought, why am I up so early? So I grabbed my phone and right away I had a message from John Boats. And it said, um, waking Ducky up, right? So I thought that was kind of funny because I was waking up, but it had already been on my phone. But it was the first thing I laid eyes on was John Boats' message, waking Ducky up. So... That was one of those moments where I was like, you got my attention. I'm going to dig in and finish this and get a live out there because somebody is reaching out to me and being supportive. And I want you guys to know I'm supportive of you guys for all your work that you do on Twitter and Facebook and Reddit and everything, all the truthers. And look where we are. Look where we are. We've got Corey Zipper trying to find some help. And here we all are. Um, and you guys, I have no doubt you guys will get behind this person and help them. Um, Teresa says, the FBI main, DC, main in D.C., I wouldn't trust either. Corey Zipper says he helped the police murder her and cousins to someone in Manitowoc Courthouse. Whoa. R.D., Corey said absolutely Scott is involved. Um, Teresa says, I think, I think he was him and Bobby dark side of the moon gives a thumbs up. Teresa says, RH has something to do with this dark side of the moon. Teresa for sure. Gold gem. I think RH and Bobby got threatened into helping cover up and get convictions. Teresa says, those of us in Wisconsin, I worry about who speak out. I agree, Teresa, but you know what? We've got to stand up. And yeah, I'm in Wisconsin. I, I could be hit by a train tomorrow. We've still got to help the locals stand up. So Gold Gem says maybe more. But I think Scott and police set up TH to die. I think she had pics and info on cops. Gold Gem says killed TH and convicted Stephen. Two birds, one stone. Kelly Perry says Wisconsin authorities appear to be corrupt and no ethics. Teresa says Gold Gem is, makes sense. Kelly Perry says... Ooh, I mean, it's just, I'm going to just read for a little bit here. Gold Jim says, RD talks about the photos that were in rotation. I bet TH had tons of incriminating info and pics on high profile people. 
Corey Zipper says, Local news completely involved. Sent out fake news crews to Calumet County Courthouse. Bob Neely, Channel 26 News, was a program manager who sent them. They never reported a word of our story involved. Tracy Bowman says, Wow, at Corey Zipper, you are brave coming out with this. I guess you've had enough. Teresa says, Barb was furious with the hall box when Brendan was convicted. Her comments bother me as if she knows something. Kelly Perry says Wisconsin citizens deserve so much better. Gold Jim says, RD, I am personal friends with Kayla Avery and Brad Dassey. You have no idea how Uyghur and Fassbender verbally threatened and abused Kayla to lie about Brendan. I actually believe that. I truly, truly, truly from the bottom of my heart do believe that. Corey Zipper says, we have been pounded four years by King Kress and all the cops, Manitowoc and Calumet, both corrupt as they come. Thanks for your support, everyone. We thank God we are still alive. Teresa says, we do, Kelly. It's everywhere, though, not just here. Gold Jim says, she flipped on the stand because she knew it was so wrong and Ellie wouldn't do the right thing. She flipped and didn't say she was forced because she was scared of Ellie. Bless her heart. She was such a young one, too. Gold says she is still haunted and aff and aff affected to this day by what they said and did to her. I'm actually scared to know what they did to that poor girl. I mean, honestly. I mean, think of when Uyghur and Fassbender approached Brendan the first time on camera, how they were apologizing for getting in his face and getting rough. What were they doing to these poor minor kids without lawyers present and parents present. If they're still haunted and we're looking at 15 years later, that's severe. That is severe. Dark Side of the Moon says, Gold Gem, maybe you might want to contact Robert Ducky in private too. You certainly are welcome. Um, like I said, I'm not here to say Earl Avery killed anyone or any of these people. I am here right now trying to show that the job wasn't done right in the court system. During trial, it was not a fair trial. Stephen and Brendan were slammed into prison on false pretenses, on false information, on false evidence that was coerced by law enforcement. And the only time... I've gotten a negative slam on any of my 24-point conflict and told I was stupid was on Scott Tadich's. And I'll tell you, it's not the most brilliant writing I've ever seen. So I think that says a little bit about poking a bear. Just saying, no offense to the bear hunters out there. But, okay, let's continue on. So, um, I'm just, I'm glad I came on today. It, uh, it does matter. Every day we work to bring light to the wrong, to the illusion out there, um, to the fake news, to corruption. Every day we bring any light to that little dark corner. Is a day you can put your head on your pillow and know you accomplished something. And that's what we're doing today. So Gold Jim says, Corey, you are brave and a badass man. We will help protect you. Teresa says, but I don't know firsthand. They've screwed me too. Not getting into it and not and nothing compared to like this. Stephen says, I'd love to hear that what Corey has to say. Australia is behind Stephen. Kelly says, I'm not in Wisconsin, but support everyone who has been wronged. Hey, Martha. I'm blowing you kisses. Good to see you. Teresa's all happy to see her dark side is too. Corey says, remember, have Netflix Kathy Zellner or a reporter who will take our story of entrapment come directly here. Stephen couldn't use police entrapment as a defense. We can prove we're entrapped. True. Absolutely. Corey, we'll do our, I guarantee you, we'll work hard for you. We'll work hard for you. Our group is not going to leave you high and dry. We will put the information out there. 
Corey says, we are far too important to Calumet County to let us out of the area or their grass. Anybody who comes to see proof won't be disappointed. We could also use protective custody. Thanks again, all. Jeez, I wish we could give you that. Um, I can talk to someone in the area to see if they can give you that. And I will make some calls as soon as possible to see if, well, first of all, contact me in private. Let me figure out how many of you were talking that would need protective custody. I mean, I can't guarantee anything. Um, it's a risk, you know that, and you have to be aware what risk we're taking. I take that risk every time I do a live because it's just two hours away. Anybody could hop in their car and be like, yep, it was the uh, virus, whatever. So we'll do our best to help protect you. But for me, what protected me was to get myself out there and keep talking because that, that's the more people that knew, the less I became the target because everybody knows what I know. You know, what good is it to kill me off or to whatever? They try to discredit me, but I just walk on. I just keep walking. I don't care. I ignore them. What are they going to do? Everybody worries about credit. Well, you know what? I don't care about credit. I really don't. I, I don't care who finds whatever it is to get them two guys home from prison. Just do it and do it today. Right? Uh, Gold Jim says, Corey was Teresa Hallbach killed because she knew things too? Or was she just upon it to convict Stephen and Brendan or not sure? Justin Lim Lim Limke said, love having chats with RD and all your truthers. Um, thank you very much. You know I enjoy it a lot or I wouldn't be doing it. Um, Gold Gem says, RD, I am very closely knit support group with family members of Avery and Dassey's very peaceful group, 90 Five percent of the time, but Barb occasionally comes, bashes everyone, and defends Scott and BD. Gotcha. Yeah, frustrating. So you guys, um, that's I feel that's about it for the day. I do want to throw a shout out for Debbie G. She did make a live. Good to see you. Sorry, it's at the end. I'm gonna give you guys just a a few more seconds here. Is there anything else that we want to share today? I feel. We could go back over real quick, um, just our 24 points. Um, I really want to hear from everybody on the truth. I mean, obviously, we're getting more information in the lives than we are in just, you know, doing this research all by ourselves. But in doing the research, it, it gathers the group. So in all fairness, let's go over the 24-point conflict, motive, money, Claims Stephen um, ordered Lori to have sex with him, with um, he to have sex with Lori, his wife. Um, he had a violent past as well as um, cameras in a bathroom and so forth. Um, there was some misconduct with his daughter as well as Colburn and um, Candy and Earl all had a relationship. Um, we've talked about Kayla as well as Candy not liking Stephen. Um, Stephen getting accused that some photographs he had would have gotten Earl in trouble. Um, a vol he volunteered Stephen was guilty in the beginning, but now we know they've patched things up. They're friends. Um, made a couple weird statements. He did have access to Stephen's blood, um, and he had opportunity, so that's a, that's a big one. I need an alibi to clear him. Really, I do, because he did drive the end loader, According to the eyewitnesses, we don't know what was coerced and what was the truth, but according to this, he was driving the end loader when Stephen was interviewed by the news. That's what he had stated as well. Um, dogs alerted in the quarry, and that's where the public bone was found. He was hunting with the same make of gun that was claimed to be the murder weapon. He said he drove by the Rob 4 on 1104, and it wasn't there. So he drove by the location, I should say. And the RAV4 wasn't there on the ASA property, ASY property. He had uprooted trees, but then the trees ended up covering up the RAV. He stayed behind when the family went to Crevice, but like I said, that's a weak point because he was supposed to stay. And it could have actually been in his benefit to stay to protect the property. However, he gave permission for POG to search the Avery Salvage Yard, which I'm not sure what I would have done. 
Um, he did hide in the D in the bedroom when they came when law enforcement came for his DNA. Again, we talked about that possibly because of the way I think it was um, Gold's Gym pointed out the family had been betrayed and been beaten down mentally by law enforcement. So all of them were shaken in their boots and the law enforcement were coming off like, you know, pit bulls. So maybe he just freaked out because he thought that they would use his DNA to plant it later. Who knows? I mean, I might have thought that myself. Broken glasses. I think that's interesting that he had broken glasses. And then later we find out that there's broken glasses at the end of Dassey's driveway. Um, but he did know the salvage yard really good. The thing is, you guys, it all comes back to alibi. He was never even a suspect. It shows right there not being a suspect and not having an alibi in a murder investigation where you have motive and opportunity. It's shitty police work. It's lazy. It's targeting Stephen. Um, and it's wrong. And this is simply to get them a new trial. So, all right, guys, I'm going to come back over here and catch a few more. Let's see what we got. Justin says, there are so many eyes of truthers out there to be quiet, all of us. Exactly. We've grown and grown. Hi, Tyson. Good to see you. Good to see you. Very, very happy to see you. Goldstrom says, RD, how can we help Corey in our own way? Um, once Co Corey can, 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 I'm stumbling, confirm some stuff and give us a little bit more to grab onto, then what we can do is we can get it out there. We can get a hashtag going. We can get Reddit's going. We can get Facebook going. And we can start showing the documents how they entrapped the witnesses and Corey is expressing that they have proof of this and that's what we need. So that'll help a lot to get that information out for Corey. Poor Teresa. Corey says poor Teresa wasn't involved, but yes, she knew and worked for people who were. And unfortunately, Pawn probably abused sexually as well. Kratz asserted before being murdered by them. Oh, freaking me out, freaking me out. I just, I want more information so that we can get to the, to this and just get people come forward, get them out of prison and get this done. So Gold Jim says, well, Corey, thanks for being brave. These people are disgusting and need taken down. Teresa says, maybe Kratz was THS stalker. Tracy says, is someone at Auto Trader involved, Corey, or Tom Pierce? Stephen G. says, can you back that, Corey, with proof? Corey says, remember, they make up a pornographic ring, and they've been operating with impunity since the late 70s, caught with hidden cameras in our home in 1995. Teresa says, that one lady before TH who worked at Auto Trader was L.E. Darkseid says, Teresa, maybe. She did get an email from a guy called Ken. That's true. And Teresa says, wow. Tracy says, oh, yeah, dark side. That, yeah, that, I agree, you guys. Um, Ke Kelly Perry says, Dave Bogota says the same about the club. Martha Dickinson says, agreed. I never had a problem with Chad either. All right, guys. Well, it has been quite a lengthy live today, but I want to thank you all. Um, well, I'm not going to go until we're we're ready. So I'm just going to keep reading because this is the most fascinating live I've ever been a part of. Hey, Corey Zipper says news has been involved since at least then. Never would have heard of Avery except for Netflix covered up by news victims of this crime crime rain routinely get. Any more questions for Corey as long as we have him on? I mean, I find it very interesting, Corey, that um, you're suggesting that Scott Tadich was involved and then also that he is more or less keeping Barb from having contact with those that could help her. It would, it would imply then, do you know if Scott Tadich was pre-planned and chosen um, as a mole for lack of better questions? Martha Dickinson is sending a hundred percent support. 
And again, I want to thank all of you. There's a handful of you that have put down 12 bucks or whatever. And there's been one person put down 100 recently, which shocked the heck out of me and helped me get Vimo. Um, but those of you, and I'm not saying we need a bunch of you to do it. We've been able to pay for our site through these supporters. And I want to thank them. Um, they, they have allowed us to remain not monetized by the system, but a, able to pay for actual video hosting, which keeps us from getting interrupted by, by advertisers, which keeps the children safe from their data getting collected and resold. Um, so we're COPA sensitive and compliant. So Corey answers the question and said, Tracy. So let's go up and see what Tracy's question was. Okay, Tracy's question was, that one lady before TH who worked at Auto Trader was LE. Corey Zipper says, Tracy, my guess is yes, Auto Trader. Gold's Gym says, Corey, I will just come out and ask, is Ryan Hilligus involved or Bobby Dassey? Or is it mostly a police and Scott Tadich operation? So now, I'll tell you what. I have got to take a two-minute break because my eyeballs are floating and so I'm going to go do that. I'm going to let this roll for a minute. Think of this as um, intermission. Go to the bathroom. Take a break. This is the most interesting live I've ever done. And I'm not giving it up um, till we get as, mi as, as many answers as we can. So I will be right back. And I appreciate your patience. Okay, you guys, I'm back. Thank you. Sorry for that. I had to go. I couldn't wait anymore. I was squirming. Talk about, uh, whew, I couldn't even read anymore. My eyeballs were floating. So, um, I got to back up because I missed so much. Okay, let's see. Where did we leave off? I read that and that. Yep. Dave Pagoda says the same thing about the club. Agreed. Martha Dickinson says agreed. I have never had a problem with chat either. Yep, we read that. Okay, I think I just went way too far up. Okay, here we go. Gold Gem says, Corey, I will just come. Okay, so they asked a question. That's, that's where we left off. Corey said, I will just come out and ask, is Ryan Hilligus involved or Bobby Dassey? Or is it mostly a police and Scott operation? Gold Gem, I've always believed that they were just bribed or threatened to help cover things up or cops would turn on them too. Let me grab a drink. I'm a huge loud drinker. Sorry. It's my sweet tea. I love it. Uh, Tracy says, okay, that makes sense as Teresa was leaving and they asked her to do that day. Yeah. So, what always bothered me, I'm going to dive into that for just a minute. I'll, I'll put my cursor there so I know where we left off. 
Um, keep in mind in the scenario of deer camp, all right, and the quarry. The quarry is set off just a little bit. Deer camp actually is a, at the same elevation in land um, to be able to look straight off and be able to see Stephen Avery's trailer in the road. And at that time of the year, the leaves are falling off. And so by the end of October, beginning of November in Wisconsin, um, the bow hunting is in full bloom because the leaves are down generally, generally, okay? And in that, it leaves that line of sight very clear, unlike, unlike the bus driver theory. So you really could see if there was a fire going and so forth and blah, blah, blah. You could also possibly see if somebody didn't continue to go to the quarry, but went the opposite direction as if to leave. So if the message didn't get, you know, relayed for her to come down to the quarry, is it possible somebody at deer camp could see that she wasn't coming down to the quarry and go to plan B to have her followed? So, um, let's see. Debbie G says, Ken Kratz is a sexual deviant. Maybe he put the moves on TH and got rejected. Maybe he got mad and killed her. And that's why no one will talk. Well, she was photographing nude photos, right? How do we know that King Kratz wasn't into that? Wanting his sexual deviant partners that he was coercing to play the part photographed for possible blackmail. He, he's like that. He made a statement that the only way to win was to be deceitful and that made him the master. He made that statement, you guys. Gold's Gem says, Corey, if you don't feel like divulging any info here, please don't feel obligated. We want to help you feel comfortable and support to do what's right. Exactly. Whatever. If you want to save it and we talk later, that's fine. Whatever you want to do, we're here for you. Uh, Kelly Perry says, the auto trader photograph photographer before TH was a former DCI agent. That's something very fishy about that, especially at eight bucks an hour. Come on. If you work for the DOJ or the DCI, you need a part-time $8 an hour job where you pay for your own gas and you travel all over the counties. And then to have Stephen Avery as your route and you hand it off to Teresa. Seems so pre-planned. Corey Zipper, 16, or 164 Main Street, Potter, Wisconsin, 54160. Justin says, just watch the way KK leads his witnesses in questioning. He's a master manipulator. Debbie G says, who photographed the pics at the picnic? Maybe TH knew that too much, knew too much. Who knows who came across some old photographs laying around. Isn't it interesting that they popped up again after being buried? They just popped up years later. Debbie says no one ever even looked at KK. How about we do a 24-point conflict on KK next? Should we do that? Should we do King Kratz as our next Denny suspect? Hi, Stacy Susser. Thank you for joining us. They say, I have many, I have many entrapping police reports held in a safe deposit box. CCPD wrote many reports about Corey and myself that are not factual. Wow. Tracy says, Corey, are you not scared? Some people just are tired of messing around here with being fearful and want to get to the bottom of it because they're fearful every day by not sharing it. Kelly Perry says police were collecting no naked photos from under TH's bed while she was still a missing person. Corey says again, this is routine for these cops. Many dead and entrapped in this area Netflix didn't hear about. Scott Tadich won't let us talk to Barb. Chuck Avery involved also. Well, Corey, I really 
I just want to get to the bottom of it so that we can get help. And if you would be willing to do an affidavit to the story part of it, we will assure you it will get to Kathleen. And as a witness, that would that would help her. Okay, so Myra and um, Darkseid are voting yes. We're doing the 24-point conflict, making a murder of King Kratz next as our Denny suspect. Kelly Perry says KK needs 48 points. <laughs> That'll be interesting to find out, right? Gold's Gem says, RD, did you miss Corey's statement? Unequivocally said police killed her. I did miss that statement. Okay, back up. Thank you. Corey Zipperman, Zipperer says, Tracy Bowman, yes, police killed her. Conspiracy caught between Calumet and Manitowoc Sheriff's Department. So I'm going to ask, says Corey, I haven't really asked anything. Let's read what you've got on the thing first. Um, and thank you, Gloria, for pointing that out. Or um, Gold's Gym for pointing that out. Corey says, Chuck Scott and an employee of Avery's named Stacy conspired with police will not let us near Barb Stephen. And Stacy. Chuck Scott and an employee of Avery's named Stacy. Oh my God. Now my head's just like ready to blow. I want to go find out who Stacy is. Okay. And it's a conspiracy between Calumet and Manitowoc. And, um, are you talking about like a pact between the two of them? Debbie says, if TH knew too much, maybe she's in the witness protection program. Teresa Taylor says, yes, do KK. Debbie says, yes, do KK. Okay, so we're definitely doing Ken Kratz on our next 24 point. We'll do that. All right, so let's keep going. Corey says, Corey Zipper says, won't let us near Barb, Steve's sister. We have enough evidence to get him released and they know it. Okay. Wabla says, I'm serious. I know how these television companies work. Okay. I missed something. So let's go back up. Wabla says, Hey RD, I think the victim's brother, the ex-boyfriend Scott and Brendan's brother are all involved in a joint operation with the police and the victim is still alive, but being given a payoff. Well, I don't doubt you're serious. I mean, that's definitely a theory that a lot of people have worked on. And it hasn't been debunked. It hasn't been disproven. Martha Dickinson says, I still think KK, King Kratz, learned of her doing the divorce of couple where wife wants negatives. I still think KK was one calling TH. I think that's interesting you bring that up. I had never thought of that. Now I'm going to go back and we need to look up and see who handled the case between Casey Sheck and Bradley Sheck. Because if the prosecutor was Ken Kratz, that'll, that'll really cinch things up pretty tight with the noose. Wabla says, we will make you a star instead of compensate you. You will look after your family financially. Oh, we will look after your family financially and we will make you people. And we will make people believe you are in prison. Hmm. Creepy Kratz. Yeah, Martha, you're right. Yeah, the, the problem I have is... The timing is everything. And we have a $36 million lawsuit. Might have only boiled down to $4 or $9 million or something like that. However, it was beyond the money. They weren't going to take a hit like that. Because Peg L., the Attorney General, General Peg Lautenschlager, had already went on paper, on written document, and made a ruling. And her ruling was, and she based it on her personal feelings, and she stated that everyone was cleared, including the counties and law enforcement, of doing any wrongdoing to Stephen Avery. She had put her name out there, her face out there. 
and it came back to bite her hard. And she, I believe, bit back. So Corey says, okay, wait, wait, wait. Tracy Bowman, she's there answering. So where is Tracy Bowman? Okay. All right. Corey Zipper says, Tracy Bowman, we used to be, have come a long way with our faith and trust in God. Also, after 25 years, being a victim like Avery becomes life, whether it's a prison or not. Wabla says, why pay out $36 million when you can make $50 million on TV show and everyone is a winner? Huh. Yeah, so if this is true, I'm just going to come out, Corey. I'm going to take a minute to throw this out there because this has been a theory of mine for a very, very long time. I have this theory um, that Bobby Dassey actually left the house at noon and Scott Tadich had Bobby Dassey's truck and stayed at the Dassey residence, waited for Teresa to do her photographing of the van, gave um, Stephen the magazine, and then Teresa unknowingly left the property and um, with the killer. So I think Scott Tadich had set up a hustle shot. She knew to contact, connect with Scott Tadich um, because that was her hustle shot, but she didn't know he was a killer. And I believe that he basically um, tailed her and ended up basically killing her somehow. But you're saying law enforcement killed her? Like, did somebody shoot her through her car windows? Is that is that where we get the holes in the windows? And was she killed on Highway 147? So let's, we'll wait for the answer, but uh, that was a lot. I know I'm just kind of rambling, but I'm overwhelmed. Justin Lemke says, look at the time of the arrest compared to the depositions. Who was the next one scheduled the day after Stephen was arrested? Kasurik and Pogel. Um, Martha Dickinson says, even if he wasn't involved, you know, he would have turned about her doing nude photo shoots. Yeah, he would have heard about it. Yeah. Corey said, yes, conspiracy routine for decades with these two counties. Why do you think they had murder trial moved here? Counties border each other. Wabla says the answer is in Stephen's alibi. Gold Jim says Scott tailed her, and when she pulled over, cops dragged her off, but she wasn't dead, in my opinion. Dark Side says she agrees with Martha about um, KK taking advantage of being involved in anything to do with nude photos, including Teresa. Yeah. But yeah, I'm very curious to find out if it is possible that... And we can do a background check on that. So Casey and Bradley actually went to court over those photographs. Now we just need to find out, was Ken Kratz part of that civil suit? I don't know. I find these lives enthralling because you guys have your own research that you've been doing. And then to get people that are locals that are coming forward and sharing with us more and more detail, it just starts, the puzzle pieces are fitting together. They're just fitting. We're just basically waiting to get an answer from Corey on the fact that was Teresa called on, uh, killed on Highway 147? Um, and did, I mean, how did that go about? Just 147 had so many witnesses of the RAV sitting there. And Irvin Koning was the one that saw holes in the windshield as well as the driver's door. Um, Gold's Jim says, Corey would, you, Corey would know better, but RG, I agree with your theory. I think cops took her back to Scott's trailer, tortured or killed. Didn't Scott's trailer get burned down and Carby's car? Yeah, Bobby's car got crushed. Yeah, his truck. Yeah. So Scott's trailer burnt to the ground and Bobby's truck was crushed and Scott tried it, Tadich tried to sell Bobby Dassey's gun. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's all true. That's true. So I would appreciate any information that could be sent to me that we could actually get some of this proof out there and and get Zellner some information too. Um, at this point, I'm not 100% sure that Zellner can add on to her information, but if something very serious like this comes up, it might fit into what she's already working on. Um, Mary, Mary, hi, good to see you. Mary, Mary says, Ducky, I am listening not well, just thinking how many times law enforcement went to her house. Are you sick, Mary? Are you not feeling well? Or are you distracted, you mean? I hope just distracted. Oh, yeah, Gold's Gym says, then Scott got moved into a nice new home for his troubles. Yeah, the the cash flow coincides with court dates. We've seen it. And it just it, it boggles my mind that people can't see that Scott Tadich was receiving money. So we've got our answer. Corey Zipper says, yes, police also tried to kill us, as detailed in their numerous police reports we managed to retain. Again, this is a pornographic ring involving numerous officers, reporters, and officials. It's huge. Martha Dickinson, 58, says Teresa Halbach had to testify. I don't know what that means, Martha. Um, Wabla says Manitowoc County and the state of Wisconsin are com complicit in the conspiracy to cover up the known abduction. Trailer was burnt, but she is not dead. Mira Pennington says, what was the man and woman's name that was divorcing again? Horrible short-term memory. It was Bradley and Casey Sheck. And that's C-Z-E-C-H. Bradley and Casey. Wabla says the trailer was where she was staying before they could get her safely out of the state. Huh. You know, that is where you'd say to get her safely out of the state because we did have radio silence on the DOJ on the day they moved that RAV. On the day after, actually, on the 6th. We had radio silence. You even hear the dispatcher saying to Colburn that the radio's still down and they can't run some checks. Martha Dickinson says, I thought Scott sold trailer and garage somewhere burned. No, Scott never sold the trailer. It burnt to the ground. A garage was flattened too at the zipperers. Um, Sandra F. says, I think Bobby accidentally shot Teresa and Scott helped Bobby cover it up because didn't... They do a lot of shooting on the farm. Sorry, my bad English. Oh, no worry, Sandra. We we all have typos anyway, whether we're English or not. Well, this is absolutely an enthralling live. Interesting way to spend the afternoon is getting to the bottom of some of this. So Tracy asks, whose bones are they at Wabla? I can tell you what I think on that, but we'll wait and see. See, the timing for me on Teresa is, is down to the wire. Um, it just bothers me. Cor uh, Corey Zipper says, Court TV banned from covering Avery trial. Local news only then censor to the rest of the world. Nice, huh? Wabla says they kept her overnight at the trailer to set up the moving of the wrap first, then got her away before getting caught. Getting caught. Hmm. I don't know. I'm. Yeah, I got that question. Gold gems. Why would they let TH live live? No way. Wouldn't that be really risky, you guys, to have TH live? I just, um, for me, I personally have a hard time swallowing that they 
have a girl live when um, this group is ruthless. They just threw a 16-year-old boy's life away. You know, it just... It, Martha Dickinson says at the hearing where the negatives were requested by the wife of the husband T.H. was sleeping with. Yeah, that's what I want to know, Martha. Is KK part of that? Is King Kratz part of the Casey and Bradley Shack court case about the negatives? I would love to know. Jane asks, forgive me if already ask if Corey is related to George Zipper. They said yes, Janie, that they are related. Wabla says she is a part of it. TH has been paid off. Hmm. Not sure. <laughs> Kelly Perry says, Martha, I believe that was also in Brown County. Wouldn't that be interesting if that's where the court case was? Corey says, when the word was asking for more, when the word, when the word was asking for more information on who killed Teresa, local news, oh, the world. Okay. When the world was asking for more information on who killed Teresa, local news failed to report others like us were entrapped by crats and cops as well as almost murdered by. So, did you know the guy that went by the name Grim Corey, where he tried to come forward and ended up dead as well? And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying, the thing is, is a lot of, a lot of people have spoken of what you're saying. So I know you're right. I know there's coercion and pressure amongst the locals. And for you to come forward, I'm just looking forward to being able to share some proof. Um, you said you have 500 documents. It would be wonderful to be able to have access to some of those. We can upload them in the cloud and that would protect them on a public nature so that we could add them to the No Crime, No Time site. We actually have file sharing there. Um, if you send me your email, if you email me, I'll make you a member of that so that you can freely upload any document you like and share with the public. And that way, as you need to share something, you're not having to email the same document over and over. You could actually just share the link too, because we have a terabyte of storage area and any documents we want can go up there. Gold Jim says, Corey, why were you such a threat to them? Because you know and have seen too many incriminating things? Question. So we're waiting that answer. Um, Martha Dickinson says, when she asked for directions. Yeah, that would be interesting. If it was all was an accident and Teresa just was asking for directions and she got shot. Okay, Corey's um, got censored for a minute. And so I, I approved it. I don't know why YouTube. Oh, because of bullshit, the word. Okay, so Corey says, local news, Kevin Rampa, Channel 2, got off the phone with me knowing we know who killed her. Then told world there is no new information. Bullshit indeed. So, Corey, do you know if she was killed on the 31st right away or if she was held? Did you already tell us if she was held in Scott's trailer or if she was held somewhere else? Martha Dickinson says someone said that there is a place in Washington state called Stevens Point. A lot of witness protection folks up there have to cross over into Canada, then back in. I haven't verified that, though. Interesting. 
Gold's Gem says, Gold's Gem says, so Corey, do you know specifically who pulled the trigger on Teresa or just that people set her up? Ripper Jack Gaming said, bullshit indeed. Agreeing with um, Corey. Corey says, possibly related to George. Don't know. Okay. Okay. I misunderstood. I thought you were related to George. Well, the age old thing that we have in this case, if you had to like ask the two or how would, how would I put this? The two most conflicting arguments in the Steve Avery case is not about innocence or guilt. Ironically, it's about if the victim is actually dead or alive. And if the wrath is, if there's one wrath or two, that should tell you a lot about this case. There's not as much argument about the fact that, that the suspect um, was targeted. Um, there's not as much argument about his innocence. Most people generally agree that Stephen is innocent. The argument in this case is more is if there's one or two RAVs or, you know, is there two RAVs or one, if it was blue or green, and if Teresa, the victim, was actually alive or dead. And do you know, you can think, you can thank King Kratz for this and everybody a part of the part where they took King Kratz's handshake as a guarantee that that is Teresa Hallbach's DNA from a pap smear. So Gold Gem says, Wabla, any proof Teresa is alive as you claim? And Wabla says, unless they had an incinerator, there is no way those remains came from a burn barrel or an accelerant. I agree. I agree with that. Um, STE Duck says the justice system stinks. Can't believe this happens in the United States. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks for dropping in, Ripper Jack uh, Gaming. I appreciate it. Wabla says, unless they had any, oh, I read that part. And then Gold's Gym says, Scott had access to a smelter. True, he worked at a smeltery. And Gold Gym says, and could get cops in there at any time. How about 3 a.m.? Well, guys, I... I look at it and um, <clears throat> I find it interesting that Teresa Hallbach's social security number is still active. Why, why would that be? You know, why, why would that be if she's actually dead? I've, we've seen a lot of things weird. Her missing poster, poster is dated the 2nd of November, but she wasn't reported missing until the 3rd. Um, we've looked up Websites that were created October 31st as memorials for Teresa. I witnessed one myself. Um, I got kind of like back in the day in the old school ma'am stuff when it first came out. And we had our little websites and stuff. And I said, I've never heard anything about this Teresa's dad, Richard Urban Hobbock. Nowhere. And so if that guy really existed, somebody show me a website or something, you know, just challenging him right away. Somebody, um, I couldn't find anything on the web. I had searched and searched and searched and I told him all, I'm like, if he was real, how come I can't look him up? How come I can't even get a background check on Richard Urban, blah, 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 Halbach. Well, it was a couple days later that one of them produced a legacy obituary for me. And it was him. And uh, I read all through it and everything. And it explains some things about, you know, Teresa's name was on there, but Mike's wasn't. That was weird. Tim's was. But anyway, it was dated 2016. Excuse me. 
propaganda, fake news. They hear what we want. They go make it. They throw it on the web. And the gullible sheeple just read it and say, oh, yep, 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 here it is. He did die that way. Well, we can't. We, we, we can't just go by what we think we know. We actually have to legitimately rely on our own investigation. And what I felt went and I took it back to everybody and I said, so this is, this is a document you're showing to prove to me that Richard Urban Hallbach actually existed is this document, which was created on the web in 2016. Not only was it created 2016, but it had been created that morning. So need I say more? And that's truth. That is the truth. So Gold Jim says RD wobbly wobbla and Corey's statements contradict each other. Maybe not intentionally, but they both claim some sort of proof. One says they know who killed her. One says she's alive. I agree. I agree. I find this very interesting. It's like a, a good debate in a way. I'm learning a lot here. We'll have to see who can provide proof. Gold's Jim says, I want to support both Wob and Corey, but won't. More conflicting theories work against us, or maybe both can agree who set her up and abducted her. Wobla says, I know who killed her at Gold's Jim, but I also know 100% she's alive. Okay. Dark Side of the Moon says, I remember you telling us that when you found that out, Ducky. I know. For a real, real. Corey Zipper says, Gold's Jim. Yes, we got one of a long list of cops who entrapped us as well. Also, Tom Martin and Tom Azire from Green Bay FBI office. Gold's Jim says, they, quote unquote, either killed her, Corey, or let her go with payoff and gag ordered. Wabla. I agree. Martha believes they faked her death. Tracy says Wablast is contradicting themselves. Mira says Gold's Jim, I have to agree. I can't, you can't have it both ways. Right. Um, you know, I find it hard to believe that the bones that were used were Teresa's. And I think that's where people got to believe that it was, it, she couldn't have died. But I'm going to offer you a completely different theory. And that is the one that could have very well really happened as well. And this theory is that both of the, the stories are, are true. Um, she didn't die right away. She died later and she, her body was cremated, um, in a smelter or a crematory. Um, but that the bones would be someone else's, which would have brought up this whole, maybe she's alive because I have a feeling that however Teresa was killed, I, the theory would go then that it, it would have held the secret to the real killer. And so her body would have been completely removed, especially if what Corey Zipper is saying works out, pans out to be the truth and that law enforcement killed her this body would 100% disappear. And that would that would fit the lines of the Sikiki note because the Sikiki note says body burnt up in smelter Friday morning, 3 a.m. You know, um, when a body, when this guy, this worker fell over into the smelter, his body did not even hit that lava hot before he was burning up. He disintegrated. There's no recovery from these smelters. If you fall in or you're thrown in, there's no dunk it and bring it back up. And you've got, you know, like acid where the bones are all still there and the flesh is gone. No, when you talk smelter or you're not talking crematory. You're talking complete annihilation of existence. And what would you want if you really were, if the law enforcement had really done this, they would want complete annihilation of the existence of evidence, how this victim could have died, right? And that would have been the answer to the smelter. So the sick key would play right in there. And that would be that the body burnt up in a smelter at 3 a.m., on Friday morn. Now, 
if you were trying to send a signal out that that had been accomplished, right? You can't necessarily risk walking up and telling somebody, yep, job's done, boss. You might send a signal out. You could disguise it as possibly somebody with low intelligence that you've judged Stephen Avery to be and fake it out and fake the handwriting to make it look like something he may have wrote, right? And then you'd be putting a lot of pressure on Scott Tadich. Or could it possibly be that the Sikiki is a genuine eyewitness account from another country, possibly, or of, of not English speaking, or English as their second language, maybe, writing the note after witnessing the annihilation of the first victim that was killed by law enforcement. Is that possible? That's very possible. And in that, if they were covering up who was the real killer, they would need a replacement. And that's where we get into possibly what Corey's talking about, where he's talking about the the cousin, okay, in the bones. So let's jump back over here. Um, Gold Jim says, Corey says, Weigert led the killing. Did I miss that? I, want, I don't want to miss it. I'm scrolling back up, guys. Okay, I'm not able to see where that is being said. Do, 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 do. Weigert, uh, the long list of cops who have trapped up. Oh, yeah, as well. Okay, got it. Got it. All right, now. Gold Jim says, bones look more like something Stephen could do on site as opposing to cremating. Corey says, I don't believe Teresa is alive. I stated she was probably sexually abused when she was still alive, as Kratz asserted before murdered. Martha Dickinson says, one law. Oh, okay. She's talking about Wabla. We will hold you to that. Because Wabla says, okay, I cannot give much more at this moment, but there is a person who will be found responsible for her death, but she is alive. Stephen and Brenda will be released February 2021. I don't want to wait that long, so I hope I hope we get them out sooner. But we will see. Corey Zipper says, Weigert, just another deputy back then. Sheriff would make that call. Pogo. And uh, let's talk about sheriffs. Kasurik had retired. Peterson was running the show. Peterson was near retirement. Colburn and Deputy Colborn and um, Robert Herman of the Cleveland Auto Sales from Cleveland. They ran neck and neck and Robert won the election. So Robert Herman became the next sheriff during or preceding, I should say, the trial, Stephen Avery trial. Wabla says wrong. The complete annihilation of the body in the smaller in the smelter would not be any good. No body equals no true suspect. Mira Pennington says Wabla, sorry, and yes, Corey, I believe that as well. He's truly demented. Gold Jim says gotcha. Thanks, Corey. That world needs to know. Well, I'll tell you what. We've been given. An immense amount of information today. I do need to get off here. I have some things to get on to. Um, Corey, I appreciate everything you're sharing as well as Wabla. I do realize you guys are, you're both sharing. I believe Corey has some local information that I definitely need to understand as they have proof, they said, of over 500 documents. We do have file sharing that we could share those documents with. Um, and I would love to, you know, be able to provide that information to the public so that we could gain some understanding of what really had occurred. I'm trusting that these individuals that are sharing with us are being, um, upfront with us. And, uh, I, I look forward to getting some emails and some conversation that can expose 
more of the corruption because we do know that is not it's not fake that there are a lot of locals that are being coerced and entrapped and and there is some sort of a club ring going on over there there really is and it's extremely dangerous and we have to get it to quit to save some of these people so i'm just about to um go ahead and end today's live but um I will hit a few more statements here. Corey Zipper says, no payoff. I know some of the hall box. She's gone, I'm afraid. Thank you, Corey, for offering that. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, you spelt hall box a little bit wrong, but that probably means you're 100% legit because if you had been following the case, you wouldn't know how to spell it, whereas if you were just honestly a friend of theirs, you may not know how to spell it. So I appreciate that. And um I thank you all very, very much. I ask that you be well, you be safe, take your precautions. But uh, you know what? It, we can't allow fake news to run our lives. And this pandemic, I'm not seeing nurses in hospitals. I'm not seeing doctors in the hospitals. So you guys, somebody tell me what the hell we're sitting home for. If uh, there are... I mean, they're already coming forward and saying they way overestimated numbers and overreacted. So, all right. Thank you, Wabla, for keeping me updated. And thank you so much, Corey Zipper, for sharing with us. And please do email us that proof. I assure you, I will get it in the library. And um, I just want to throw a shout out to all of you for for joining me and uh experience this, this time together with me i appreciate it we'll get more information out there in our next 24 point conflict on no crime no time community is going to be ken kratz and hopefully we can do an interview with Corey zipper as well as possibly chad keller so we'll see how that goes you guys whoops all right much love everybody have a wonderful day thank you